welcome to the Methodist Church Diana District's Divine Worship. We are happy that you have joined us today. The Methodist Church Diana District is one of eight districts that comprise the Methodist Church in the Caribbean and the Americas. There are six circuits that make up the Guyana district, Burbese, Essequibo, Friendship, Georgetown, Mahaika, and West Demerara, with the United Mission, Linden, as an associate church. The president of the Guyana district is Bishop the Reverend Taslin Kofia Niles, the Secretary of the District Conference is Reverend Mervyn Ossie Austin, while the Treasurer of the District Funds is Miss Yolanda Abiola James. The mission of our church is spreading scriptural holiness for the reformation of the nation, while our district theme reads renewed in Christ for service and witness. Greetings in Christ viewers, sisters and brothers, and warm welcome to our divine worship experience. Today is the 11th day of the month of September, 14th Lord's Day after Pentecost. Let us worship God, and let us do so in spirit and in truth. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his holy name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nation, his marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord, a great name to be praised. Psalm 96, 1 to 4. The hymn, praise him, praise him, Jesus, our blessed Redeemer. Number 55 from the Voices in Praise.
invite us now to to pray the prayer of adoration then the prayer of confession and thanksgiving let us pray almighty god our heavenly father a very loving ever merciful king of kings and lord of lords we give you praise honor and glory on this day consecrated for worship we praise you for the work of creation through which your character and nature are revealed we confess that there is no like you none under this earth none above we see our adoration as we gather fill us with your holy spirit and make it possible that while we worship you today life through your words will be strengthened make it possible we pray that the essence of your gospel will be communicated and let your name be always glorified lord as we bring to you this adoration we bring our confession to you for we acknowledge our shortcoming against you o lord and our against our brothers and sisters we have sinned and we now pray for your forgiveness knowing that no sin can ever stand greater than your love and your mercy loving god many times we have failed failed for not seeking strength from you fail for not loving and supporting our sisters and brothers forgive and fortify us grant us your holy spirit that we may be able to please you in what we are and do because this is the assurance we have in you
brothers and sisters in Christ, Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If we sincerely confess our sins to God and pray for His forgiveness, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Sisters and brothers, we are forgiven and let our responses be Amen. Thanks be to God, we are forgiven. Amen. I don't invite my sister still to lead us in some praise and worship. Glory be to God.
Adoring and forgiving Lord, we thank you for allowing us this opportunity to worship you in this way. Thank you for the benefit of technology and the ability for us to use it. Thank you for hymns and songs sung to glorify your holy name. Thank you for those who are now listening and worshiping with us. Now that we are about to go into your word, let your word speak to us in our various situations and conditions that we may be able to live accordingly. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. And the connect sisters and brothers we pray. Let us pray. O Lord, we beseech you mercifully to hear the prayers of your people who call upon you and grant that they may both with perceive and know what things they ought to do and may have grace and power faithfully to fulfill them through Jesus Christ your Son our Lord Amen and Amen The scripture reading is from the Gospel according to St. Luke chapter 15 reading from verse 1 to verse 10 before the reading, I don't invite the choir. In the singing of the hymn, there were 99 uh, from Voices in Praise, number 182.
gospel reading according to St. Luke chapter 15, reading from verse 1 to verse 10. Glory be to you, O God. The parable of the lost sheep. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and said, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable, Which one of you, having a hundred sheep, and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and, and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who needs no repentance. Or one woman having ten silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it. When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbor, say, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so I tell you, there will joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise be to Christ, our Lord. Amen. Sisters and brothers, I greet you once again in the most precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, for the past few Sundays before us, along with other passages of Scripture, is the Gospel according to St. Luke. Exploring this book has given us some opportunity to appreciate our identity and know for sure that we too as sinners have a seat in heaven if we only come to repentance. The key verse for my message is uh, Luke chapter 15 verse 7. There will be more joy over in heaven over one sinner who repents than the 99 righteous person who needs no repentance. Let us pray. Lord, as I proclaim your word today, I pray for your anointing to fall afresh upon us. Now may the word of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be found acceptable in your sight. For you are our Lord and our Redeemer. Amen and Amen. Luke, my sisters and brothers, is listed as one of the best evangelists in the New Testament. Luke was never one of the famous figures of the early church, but he could be nevertheless listed as one of the best evangelists writing in the New Testament. He left us with a book. This material others have considered to be the loveliest book of the world, A Good Life of Christ. Luke highlights the essence of the Gospel in chapter 15, demonstrating that God's intention is not for anyone to perish, but to come to repentance and be saved. You can recall Jesus in the synagogue as he stood up to read this call of, of the prophet Isaiah was given to him and the passage he read was the one the prophet wrote in chapter 61 
verses 1 through 2 or 3 which the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor he has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and wake of we of sight to the blind and to let the prisoner go free Luke chapter 15 verses verse 1 verse 1 opens up with two opposite reactions the first one with the tax collectors and the sinners were coming near Jesus to listen to him this to me shows some degrees of appreciation and respect to Jesus' words and he sat with them the second reaction is where the scribes and the Pharisees grumbling and saying this fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them they said that to mean that this Jesus cannot be the Messiah because he is doing things out of ignorance but they were the one acting ignorantly it was an offense to them that Jesus associated with men and women who by the orthodox were labeled as sinners whoever did not keep the law the Pharisees gave them a general classification they called them people of the land cast within the kingdom of Judah and there was a complete barrier between the Pharisees and the cast in this parable uh, Jesus sought to teach the scribes and the Pharisees about God's seeking love for sinners and the reconciliation of sinners to God. He also sought to explain to them why he ate with the tax collectors and sinners. Jesus, Jesus did not eat with them simply for the sake of, 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 of physical nourishment. No, he was teaching them while they, they ate together teaching them the necessity to secure for themselves a seat in heaven through repentance. In verse 32, Jesus says that uh, he came to call sinners to repentance and that he came not for the healthy, not for the righteous, but for the poor, the marginalized, the cast, seen as nobody. Now I'm afraid that as Christians, we are not reproducing the same reaction that the, that, the, that the scribes and Pharisees produced towards men and women at the time. Young people in particular in our time who have not yet accepted Christ as their personal savior and are living in sin. We should not stay too far from them because our sole interest should be to win them for Christ. We must never stand as barriers preventing a sinner from, from coming to Jesus, from coming to experience the life in Jesus. You don't have to stand across the person in the physical to be a barrier, but only your attitude your comment and the way you look at the person is enough to chase the individual from experience Christ himself or herself. The Bible tells us that God is love. And as Christians, we believe that God loves all of his human creations despite their sin. And that he desires for everyone to repent and be saved. 2 Peter 3 verse 9 As Romans chapter 5 verse 8 put it and I quote God proves his own love for us in that while we were still sinners Christ died for us End of quote You may even have heard the popular saying God hates the sin but loves the sinner So sisters and brothers 
Jesus calls us to focus on and, and invest on winning the lost souls. Will you do so? Or are you doing so? The founder of Methodism, the Reverend John Wesley said, it is not our business to preach so many times and to take care of this or that society, but our ministry is to save as many souls as we can, to bring as many sinners as we possibly can to repentance, and with all our power to build them in that holiness without which they cannot see the Lord. This is why the church exists. Church is the only institution that does not exist for itself. We exist for the good of others. We exist that so that the sinful may find the means of being cleansed from their sin. We exist so that those who are hurting and are away from God, like the lost sheep, may find their way back to God. We exist so that the dirty, the hungry, and the depraved may find a new life. Luke chapter 15 verse 7 translates the essence of the whole gospel and the reason Jesus came into the world. There will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous who need no repentance. The emergency call now is to all of you who are listening and still are not yet in peace with the Almighty God. Will you come? Will you come because Jesus is calling you? Repent, Jesus says, and come. Come to see a God who can make you whole again. Christ is not looking at the nature or the dimension of your sin, but he is looking rather at the way he will make you become. I want to conclude with the two reactions found in verse 1 and 2 in chapter 15 of the Gospel of St. Luke. The tax collectors and sinners were coming near to Jesus to listen to Jesus rather. They did so because they had some interest. They did so because they wanted to experience Jesus somehow. They had an interest. But the scribes and the Pharisees were grumbling and very critical to Jesus, hence to the sinners. Where do you see yourself within these two reactions? Are you the one willing to get your way back to the Lord? Or you are one of those grumbling, of those uh, 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 persons who are grumbling at Jesus because he is making a way for the sinners. God moves in a mysterious way. Let the lost soul be found and let our love be well in Jesus Christ our Lord remember there is more joy in heaven over one sinner who comes to repentance and over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, let us pray. Lord Heavenly Father, we thank you for 
your word. I don't know how much it has done to us, particularly those who were listening. But we thank you. We thank you for the reminder that everyone is important to you, including the sinners. Thank you for letting us know that you are not looking at people the way they are, but you're looking at them the way you will make them become. What a wonderful God you are. Thank you, Lord, for making it possible even now that persons can come to you and experience you as Lord and Savior. Lord, I pray that you touch persons right now. Touch persons in their own corner of life, in their own situation, in their own condition. Those who seem to be approaching you, I pray that you open, open to receive them. And let them, let, let those who display attitudes of the scribes and the Pharisees, they come to understand and to accept it as a fact that there is more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous who needs no repentance. Have your way, Lord, and hear the prayers we offer. For we ask in no other name but the name of Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Amen. The hymn of response is, I have wandered far away from God. From the Voices in Praise, number 176.
loving God, we remember before you all those who have lost the way of salvation. All those who have lost their joy, talents, and potential. Those who are living hopelessly due to sin and have become spiritually dead. Make a way back for them because your word says in Luke chapter 10 verse 7 there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. Lord, change sorrow into joy alone as your church proclaims your word so that sinners may come to repentance. Put the enemy to shame and let your name, O Lord, be glorified. So many families are grieving the loss of loved ones. We ask for comfort on their behalf. We come against every disease and claim healing in the name of Jesus. Pray for those that are depressed due to the cost of living. I pray that you let them rise in hope by the truth of your holy gospel. Hear the prayers we offer. We know the name, but the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Amen. The Lord swear, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At this time, brothers and sisters, on behalf of the District President, Bishop Tick of your Niles, we thank you for taking time out to worship with us from your various locations here as well as overseas. We thank you. We thank God for those who are celebrating a special anniversary and birthday today and throughout the rest of the month of September. May God's blessings be always with you. You join us again next Sunday for worship at the same time, nine hours, on our various YouTube and Facebook platforms. So this will remain 16 hours at different circuits. District Bible study remains at 1730 hours. This is the end of our notices. Now sing with me. The closing hymn. Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful day, day I will never forget. The voices in praise numbered 244.
Amen.